Hi, my name is Brittany Sweeney Lawson. I'm the resource facilitation manager for the nonprofit, the Brain Injury Alliance of Arizona. Thank you so much for coming to our COVID-19 and the Brain series today on fantastic vax and mask resources and where to find them. Uh, just a few housekeeping things. We're going to be, as Kristen said, recording this. So just as a reminder to anyone who just joined us, if you do not want your image being part of the recording, feel free to turn off your uh, camera. While we have our speakers presenting, we're also going to have everyone have their mics off. So it should show up as that little um, microphone read with a slash through it, just so that there isn't noise distraction to our presenters. Um, with the Brain Injury Alliance of Arizona, we help connect folks who have had brain injuries of any kind, as well as their families and the professionals that serve them with resources and information. And so we will definitely make sure that you have access to all of our contact information. These slides that will be presented today will be available. Our contact information will be available and there will be links through the slides and in the chat throughout for different services and resources that are mentioned today. We did want to point out that on our calendar, on the Brain Injury Alliance calendar, we actually have another COVID-19 related event coming up on Wednesday, July 21st at 8 a.m. And that's going to take a look at how different uh, four agencies in particular tackled service delivery in the disability population during the pandemic and how they were able to be successful with that during these ongoing still challenging times. We also, if you wanna know more about our organization and what it is we do and learn a little bit about brain injury basics and symptoms, we're going to be having a Brain Basics and Resources 101. And that's gonna be on Thursday, July 22nd, starting at 10 a.m. All right, well, that's about all I have in terms of uh, those types of announcements. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn to our presenters. We have Didi Geis, Gaius Thea, and she is with the Human Services, or she's with the Maricopa Association of Governments, and she is the Human Services Transportation Planner over there, level three, if I'm saying that right. And we also have Lori Thomas, who is currently serving as the Program Manager for Healthy Aging for Maricopa County Department of Public Health. So, oh, and not to be left out, uh, I believe Ezekias Rocha is going to be helping out with some of the technology and he is also with the Maricopa Association of Government. So we just wanted to give a big warm welcome to all of you and say thank you so much for being here and go ahead and take it away. Um, good morning, everybody. Thank you for inviting me here today. Thank you, Brittany and Kristen. Um, and I do wanna give a shout out to Ezekias um, Rocha. Um, for helping us um, transition our slides here today. And I wanna thank all of you today for taking the time out and spending it with us. And we hope to provide you resource information that not only that um, would benefit you, but that you can share with other consumers and with members of your staff. Um, next slide. Just to give you a little background, um, if you don't know uh, what the Maricopa Association of Governments is, um, we are the Metropolitan Planning Organization for Maricopa County. And we cover, um, a, 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 we cover issues that kind of transcends just city by city. We cover transportation issues, air quality issues, and human services issues. Um, in the region. And on the side here today, one of, one of two of the biggest issues we have is the heat relief and um, providing information to our uh, community regarding resources during this time. Another big issue, um, if we can go to the next slide, that we are currently facing um, is COVID. Um, COVID-19 and now the Delta, you know, variant um, that kind of transcends city to city, um, state, you know, as, as a national issue right now. Um, because we are a, 
an organization where we cover these topics. We were contacted early on in the year by some of our member agencies, and that are that is all of the cities and the three Native American communities regarding transport um, and regarding some public comments that they have regarding transportation to vaccine sites. During our conversation, we noted that most of the public comments were not really regarding transportation to sites. It's actually regarding um, where do we find information regarding vaccines? How do we register? Where do we go? Um, so during our conversation, it, it was suggested that it would be helpful to have a centralized kind of clearinghouse of information. And at MAG, we um, have pulled together some uh, a website called MAG Response to COVID-19. Um, and it was mostly directed at what we were doing as an organization to protect our member agency during meetings. Um, but we realized that this was a great venue to actually consolidate some of that information and provide it on a national, state, and local level. So next slide. So in, in uh, an effort to provide information to those that we serve in our region, MAC both focus on disseminating useful information regarding COVID-19 and the vaccine rollout. So this play page uh, contains links to resources to support the health and well-being of our community. Um, if we can go to the website, it has I noted, um, um, hopefully we can bring that up um, on the web. Thank you, the web page. And if you scroll down, Ezekias, thank you so much. You can see that we have in, in the middle kind of the more um, state and, and national resources. We have the CDC vaccine finder. If you want to click on that and really quickly, if you haven't gone on to that, I rec highly recommend it. Recommend that you um, just go and kind of look at all of the resources that, you, um, that is available for you. You can find a vaccine, uh, a COVID-19 vaccine near you. All you need to do is enter your zip code and enter 85003. And if you hit that, and this brings up a wealth of information of where you can go to get your vaccine. Um, you know, we have, it's expanded from the beginning. Um, in the beginning, we did have the two really localized sites where you can go. Now it's completely expanded. Cities are, you know, taking the initiative of, of having sites. Um, you know, we see Safeway, we see Walgreens on there, Arizona Pain Treatment Centers. So the science and the resources are expanding. And instead of duplicating information that's out there, we thought we would go directly to those sites and provide you that information um, all at, on the web, on one web page. Um, if we can go back to the site again, and not as I noted, not only is there um, information on the national level. We also have um, Maricopa County, uh, who is here with, her, with us today, Department of Health Services, we have that information. And as I noted, um, on the left-hand side, we have information, Arizona Department of Health Services, Arizona Governor's Office, and, and also city information. Um, as you know, uh, well, as we found out, every city, it's building on their own initiative of getting that information out. So if we can scroll down to the city of Tempe. So oh, this link is directly to the site and has the city and the agencies update that information. Uh, the, the links to this information is tied in. So it also is updated. So um, we know that a lot of the issues and, and, and transportation still is, is an issue in getting to the sites, but the cities also recognize that. So they're having their own initiatives of providing access to some of the vaccine sites. Um, so if you want, if you scroll down, you can see vaccine sites near, you know, near you, um, initiatives that the city of Tempe is undertaking, um, providing 
regarding getting the information out, some of their local uh, initiatives, you know, um, of, of resources and encouragement uh, of the local community of, of um, the benefit of getting the vaccine site. So uh, wherever, whatever city you're in, we wanted to provide that information that really directly um, is, is relevant to you on this vaccine side. Now, if we can um, go back to the presentation. Another resource that we have on our MAG webpage, and, and uh, because we are a metropolitan pioneer organization, we work on different um, areas that are of concern to our community. And aging is also uh, a, a, an area that we are looking at and trying to provide resources. And we know is one of um, the aging and people, uh, individuals with disability are one of the hardest hit population that really we need to focus on getting this information out to. So on the um, MAG webpage, we uh, are glad to partner with the Age Friendly Network. Um, and, on it, and we have a link to their, to their website there. And on the Age Friendly Network, we are offering resources and information on topics that directly affect this population. So if we can go to the next slide. And of course, information regarding um, you know COVID nineteen and um, and and especially we wanted to look at the resources for our our um, service providers that are working with this population. So on um, the age friendly, we developed a toolkit for for the community and for service providers on how to bring up the conversation. Um, we have tip sheets on powerful partnerships of creative collaboration for vaccination equity, you know, roles of the nonprofits on vaccine equity. So we, so it has another resource uh, for you. Um, it is the Age Friendly Network and looking at the toolkits. And if you can click on the, um, the tip sheet, the powerful partnership and creative collaboration, if we can get to that, that would be great. Um, and if not, I, I, definitely. So these are two, uh, these are tip sheets that, we, that were developed with um, a national consultant and talking about, uh, talking with other agencies, these are national uh, best practices that we pulled together for you um, if you want to know uh, and, and how to start to dialogue and provide some information on the benefits of, 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 of information on the vaccine and the benefits of getting the vaccine. And so this is also available um, for you um, and the community. We can go back to the presentation. And again, I have to thank Ezekias for, <laughs> for helping um, with the transition of these slides. So um, we do, I just wanted to provide you um, a, a, one of our other resources that we have at, at MAG um, that is really focused on, on community um, collaboration and coordination. We do have a, a MAG Transportation Ambassador Program that I just wanted to um, give you some information on. It is a resource that is open to all service providers, consumers, stakeholders. We have is. And we have four quarterly meetings where we provide information on not only human services transportation and the resources out there, but best practices. We like to highlight our nonprofit agencies and the great work that we do. It is truly a coordinated effort that we provide these this information. All of you are doing great work. Consumers are, you know, putting 
are giving their voices on what is needed in the region and uh, some of the, the gaps that are in, are in our region. But the MAC Transportation Ambassador Program is a venue, is a community venue where we come together and share um, best practices and resources. And uh, one of our um, great stakeholder and partner is with um, Maricopa County and the Department of Health Services. We are so appreciative that Lori has provided updates regarding uh, COVID and the vaccine um, during this time, throughout this year and last year, uh, because information changes. You know, there's so much information and that is one of the gaps that we were seeing is that while there is a lot of information that is available out there, is where do you go to get that information? So we hope um, to assist you, your consumers, or as a consumer, that we provide this information in a, uh, in a consolidated space and, it, and not duplicating efforts and linking directly to the resources so that when their information is updated, the links are updated at the same time at the same time. Um, so I, I would, um, the next slide is my um, contact information. If anybody would like to contact me regarding any of these resources or ha have any questions, but this is a segue, this is a great segue into go, uh, going to our next speaker. As I noted, Lori has been such a great partner in providing our stakeholders and our community with resources on COVID-19. Uh, COVID-19 and vaccination, and actually being that kind of point person uh, uh, disseminating this information. So I'd like to now um, hand it over to Lori and, and for her presentation um, and the resources for, with her agency. Thank you, Dee Dee, and um, hello to Jim and Kayla, and Greg and Liz and Susan and MB and others that are on the um, seminar. I am Laurie Thomas and I am the manager of healthy aging for Maricopa County Department of Public Health. And um, uh, I am pleased to be here today. And uh, next slide. We're gonna talk a little bit today about um, COVID. I know you've heard a lot about it and we're just going to talk. I know there is some fatigue around hearing about it people are trying to take a breath. So we're gonna talk a little bit about why, why, what's the importance of still getting immunized. And um, it's the same as it was before, but we're gonna talk a little bit about numbers as well. But it, the vaccination does help protect you from getting COVID-19 and has been proven to prevent serious illness, hospitalization and death from the virus and especially for those who are um, immune, immune compromised. So next slide. That hasn't changed, but I wanted to let you know that we are seeing new COVID cases. There are new strains and this information is from yesterday. So this isn't like it was a long time ago. Total cases in Maricopa County as of yesterday were 566,830 which was up 663 cases from the day before. So that's a lot of new cases in our county in one day. And we were up seven deaths from the prior day. So it is still here among us. And um, so we need to still be aware and, and be taking precautions and getting immunized. Next. And one of the main questions that we get into our call center is why do I have to be vaccinated if I had COVID-19? And part of the reason is we don't know how long um, the um, immunization lasts if you had um, COVID-19 and if you had a mild case and if you may have had it and didn't know you had it. So um, you should be vaccinated regardless of whether you already had the, um, COVID or not. And the research shows that um, after recovering from COVID-19, if you've had your vaccine, you have a thousand times stronger um, immunization or immune response after you've been vaccinated than if you did not have had COVID. So you have a much better chance 
and a longer chance of staying um, resistant to the virus. Next. Now, some of you know all about the types of vaccines, but I just wanted to go over the fact that Pfizer is the only one that's approved for 12 and up. And by December, they're saying they'll be approved for five and up. They're going through all the testings right now for age five and up. But right now, Moderna and the J&J &J are still 18 plus. So you can keep that in mind if you are interested in getting your young adult, um, your teenager immunized. So keep that in mind. And um, the number of doses still needed for Pfizer would be two, Moderna two, and the J&J &J or Johnson & Johnson just one. Next. Next slide. Okay, let's talk a little bit about masks. People are interested in this because school is starting. And so we have um, a little issue in Arizona um, that will probably be reconciled between the Department of Education and the governor in some way. But let's talk a little bit about that. This happened yesterday and the day before. And I just wanna read you um, the latest on that that um, the CDC came out with a new guideline that said they advised unvaccinated students and staff to continue to wear masks inside school buildings for this upcoming year. Um, but that won't be the official policy for the state of Arizona. Um, the legislature um, has prohibited districts from mandating masks. And so um, I think we'll hear more about that. Um, there may be some pushback from the um, Arizona Department of Education, from some parents. We'll just see how that works out. So uh, you can still send your students to school with masks, but as of right now, the state will not mandate that um, schools will have to have unvaccinated students wear masks. So more to come on that. Okay, as far as federal guidelines, CDC guidelines, if you're not fully vaccinated, age two and above, you should wear a mask in, in indoor public places. In general, you do not need to wear a mask in outdoor settings. In areas with high numbers of COVID cases, consider wearing a mask in crowded outdoor settings and for activities with close contact with others who are not fully vaccinated. If you are fully vaccinated and have a condition or taking medications that weaken your immune system, you may need to be keep taking the steps to protect yourself like wearing a mask. Next, let's talk a little bit about where you do still have to wear masks. Masks are required in hospitals, medical facilities, planes, buses, trains, and other forms of public transportation. And um, within, um, out of the United States and hubs such as airports and, and transportation stations. And of course, if you go into another country, they have a whole set of rules. Uh, so keep that in mind. Next. Okay, we want you to be aware that there is transportation available to vaccines. And vaccines are very prevalent. They are at most um, retail stores and they are at FQHCs, the Federally Qualified Health Centers. They are still available in many areas at your family, um, your family practitioner. So they're widely, widely available. If you are a member of ACCESS, the Arizona Healthcare Cost Containment System, the Arizona's Medicaid, you are entitled to free access for a ride to get the vaccine. Arizona is trying to do everything we can to break down the barriers for people not getting a vaccine. Also, Duet, um, the um, agency in town, is placing people with volunteers for rides to um, vaccines. The Area Agency on Aging will help you register for a vaccine and find you a ride. Um, also Maricopa Care Center, which is Maricopa County's call center 
There's the number there, 372-6677. We'll also register you if you are having a difficult time registering. They'll find a place near your home with the type of vaccine that you want, and they will also help you find um, a ride as well. Next. Okay, takeaways from this week's um, data. About 2.1 million people in Maricopa County have received at least one dose of COVID vaccine, and that's great. 3.9 million um, COVID vaccine doses have been given to Maricopa County residents. The vaccine demand has remained stable in the last week at 5,600 doses per day, but that is relatively slow compared to what we did in the beginning. If you remember those pods or the point of dispensation that we had at State Farm and other big arenas, we were doing 10,000 a day in cars um, through those units. And so we had three or four of those units going in Maricopa County and they were each doing 10,000 a day. In addition to the other pharmacies, in addition to what we were doing in congregate um, um, assisted livings. So 5,600 a day is a, much, is a much less amount. What we did when the vaccine became more prevalent is to try to go to where people were through their churches, through senior centers. And we were trying to reach people where they worked, where they played, where they, in their faith institutions, so that we could overcome the barriers um, that people had in getting to the pods. So it has slowed tremendously, but we're trying to overcome the hesitancy as well. About 47% of all Maricopa County residents and 53% of Maricopa County residents 10 years and older have gotten the vaccine. 58% of Maricopa County residents 18 years and older have received at least one dose. And the reason it says 10 years and older is just because we know you can't get a vaccine unless you're 12, but that's the way the age group is broken down in the data. Next. Now, what are some of the barriers that we hear people have to getting the vaccination? And I would hope that all of you would um, help us, help your neighbors, your friends, your loved ones, your family, um, remove some of the barriers in their lives as to why they aren't getting the vaccination. One of them has been language, and we have tried very hard to overcome that. Um, all of our sites are English and Spanish. We have um, signage and um, availability uh, for registration in 12 languages. We have sent trusted messengers into um, areas with low vaccination rates going door to door. And we have people in um, community health workers and people going door to door who speak languages other than English and Spanish. Transportation, we've been um, trying to provide that through free rides. We've also had um, those people that are transit dependent and disabled. And we've been working with the Human Services Division of Maricopa County and do using paratransit. And that has been a very humbling experience as I've been to those and watched um, those people um, come to our events and see how much many of them have wanted the vaccine. Also, some people say my employment schedule just won't allow me. I don't get paid time off. We have been to car dealerships, agricultural farm workers, refugee um, sites, um, apartment complexes, um, all kinds of areas, um, lots of businesses where we feel like we um, are better able to reach people and they can get off on their break rather than having to travel and take time off. We have worked with employers to offer that time. Another hesitancy has been lack of technology when in the beginning they had to register. Now it's mostly walk-in at many pharmacies and at many pop-up sites, you don't even have to register. Um, tech literacy in general, um, that was um, a big barrier. Childcare, 
Uh, I don't want to take my child to sit in the car for a long time. Don't want to take them to the pharmacy. That has been a, 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 a barrier. Also vaccine hesitancy. Um, was the vaccine, um, was it taken time to be developed? Is it safe? Rumors. I have heard all kinds of rumors and I get phone calls on my phone for just about everything that it puts a chip in your body, that it causes a loss of hearing, that it causes infertility. Um, I have, I think I've heard them all. So there are a lot, there's a lot of misinformation about it. Um, one person called me and said that she had heard she had to have all three vaccines, which is not the case. So that is why Dee Dee was talking about trying to have central places where people can get good, accurate um, information that comes out daily. Next. These are some resources um, for you. You can go to maricopa.gov forward slash COVID and it is updated daily with data that you can go um, to put in your own zip code and find out what percentage of your zip code has been vaccinated. If you have, it's a great site. Um, you can tell what percentage of Maricopa County in general has been vaccinated. It, you can also do it by race for your zip code. Um, it breaks it down. Um, you can also do certain age groups. And um, here's a phone number if you have medical questions related to COVID. Um, that 844-542-8201. And again, if you or people that you know have been affected, their housing, their income has been food, been affected by COVID, you can dial 211 and they will uh, connect you with someone that is familiar with that particular topic. You will get a live person and that is very helpful. So if any of you have questions, perhaps there might be time for that in the chat. I don't know, we'll have to ask. But thank you very much for um, asking um, the county, Maricopa County Department of Public Health to um, have this time and explain a little bit more about COVID vaccine. And we hope to encourage you and others to get the accurate information and help us spread the word and help us hasten um, the vaccination process. Thank you.